Hello, I'm Katherine Martinez, and this is Perfect Embroidery Pro intro video number two. I have a few more things that I'd like to share with you in the software to get you started, and soon you should be ready to play on your own. In intro video number one, we accessed a built-in design from Text Designs. You may remember this button. In this video, we will use the file open commands to bring designs to the screen, edit them a bit, and work with sequence view. To open a design, we click first on File on the menu bar, and we come down to Open. We are brought into the Perfect Embroidery Pro Free Designs folder. A big thank you to Great Notions for filling this folder with so many wonderful free designs. How did we get here? Let's use the drop-down arrow on our window, and we can see the path that we have followed. From the hard drive, C colon, we came to the dime folder. From there, open the designs folder. And from there, open the Perfect Embroidery Pro free designs folder, which is where we're currently resting. If you need more information about getting to folders, you may want to view the Understanding Files and Folders video. Once in our free design folder, we can scroll through to find the file we want to play with. You may already know some of the ways to use the scroll bar, but please bear with me. Perhaps I can share with you another tip or two. You can click on the button and drag the button down. You see as we do so, we move through all of the files. You can also click individual clicks on either the up arrow, and we move up a row at a time, or the down arrow, clicking individually, moves us down a row at a time. Or you can click within the bar, either above the button or below the button, and that will move you a window's worth at a time. That's the way you'll see me do it most of the time. It gets me where I want to go quickly. We'll start with the Hawaiian block. I'll scroll all the way back up to the top, click once, twice, three times in that bar, and here is the block that I'd like to play with at the moment. You have choices. You can either click it to select and then click on open, or you can double click. It brings the design to the screen. I like to view my designs in 3D mode. It allows me to see all the stitches and so forth, and I prefer that. If you don't, you certainly could leave it in the other view. The design is on the screen, and we see the file name down here in the Design Page tab, and also here at the top on the title bar. Let's do that procedure again. File, Open, we're brought back into the same folder. You always will be. The last folder used is where you return. It happens to be what we want. So we'll go ahead and click once, twice, and this time the design I want is this Whirligig design. Double click it, brings it to the screen. Turn on my 3D to see the stitches. And again, you see the file name for this design here and up on the title bar. You also notice that I have a tab for each of the designs I have open. Let's do this one more time, but instead of going under File Open, we'll go ahead and use the shortcut, the Open button that's on the toolbar. We click on that once, brought back into our Perfect Embroidery Pro Free Designs folder, and we'll go ahead and double click on the cowboy boot and bring that to screen. I'll turn on my 3D. You'll notice that we now have three different design pages open, and we can move among them by simply clicking the tab at the bottom, whichever design we wish to work in. You also have the opportunity to bring up a clean screen by using the new. We certainly could find it under File New, but I generally use this shortcut, first button on the toolbar, and click on New. When we do that, we are brought into a clean screen it does not yet have an official file name, but the software will offer us the generic word design and give us numerical order for the designs that we continue to open. So in this case, a clean screen. Why might we want multiple designs open at the same time? Well, it's very much 
like if you're using Windows and you're in Word and Publisher and maybe online and so forth. There's different jobs require different screens so you can have access to them. In this case, in our Hawaiian block, maybe we want to just use one of the flowers. So I could do a click and drag around the flower, right click, copy it, move over to my clean design screen, right click, paste, I have my flower, I'm going to turn on my 3D, I'm going to zoom it back down a little bit so it's not so much in my face, and I can see that we have also included the green. If I wanted to play with this design, I could come over to Sequence, select the green portion, hit Delete on my keyboard, and I'm left with just this flower that in some other use could look like an ink spot or a splatter of paint. Also, if I bring up another new screen, maybe I want multiples open. I'm not quite sure what I want to do with my original design or to add it, so then I could go into my clean screen and perhaps play with some of the other things that I'm not sure what I want to do with yet. And just allow myself a play screen, very similar to a scrap piece of paper, and do some ideas out in my head before I might add them to one of my existing designs. So lots of reasons to have multiple designs open at one time. Let's go back to our Whirligig. We'd like to make some changes to this design, perhaps play with some of the different fill types that are offered. In doing so, we'll be able to take a closer look at the sequence view. The sequence view is down in the bottom right corner, and as you look in the sequence view, you see all the colors of this Whirligig listed in the order that they will stitch out. If I were to come and look at these plus signs, these allow us to expand that particular colored object. In clicking on that plus, I see that this particular area has runs and satins and so forth in the object. If I were to click on this object here, you see on the design page, it is selected by this black box with the black square handles on it. So I know which part of the design I'm working with if I can't make out that color. Once the square is expanded, the only option we have left is the minus, which means to collapse. So we would click on that button again, and it collapses. I can now see all of the colors. One of the other things that we can do with Sequence View that is very helpful, if we right click anywhere in the area and come up, we can actually expand all of the objects. That is now done. If we scroll down, we will see all of those objects are expanded. And I can go back in and right click and ask it to collapse all and it puts it back to the original look. Also in the sequence view, we see the order of stitching. The way these colors are laid out is the way that the design will stitch out. We also have a very nice tool called Slow Redraw. If I click on that button, what you see appear is this upper bar with all of the different colors in it in the order that those colors will stitch out. This bar corresponds to the list that you see in Sequence View. There are a few different ways that we can watch this sewing simulation. We'll go ahead and click on this button right here. And as it begins, you see exactly how this design will stitch out on your machine. We see the order and the stitching that will be used. We can learn a lot of good information about watching a design stitch out. In this case, we see the underlay stitching that's going to happen under each of these blue areas. You can also speed up the simulation by taking this bar and dragging it all the way to the end. We see a little faster stitch out on screen. The other option that you have is to grab this bar and drag it over to the right, watching the simulation at a faster clip but it is up to you how you'd like to play that out. We'll turn it off by clicking on the button. Another piece of information found in the sequence view is the thread color. You see the column right here for index and the threads are numbered color 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and so forth. These numbers correspond with the thread tiles that are going across on our thread bar. Let's take a look at these last two colors. If we were to click on it to select, you see it is this gold triangle. And of course, the last one is the center gold. 
To me, those look very similar in color, yet under the index I see that one is color number seven and one is color number eight. Even if I look over here on the thread tiles, they are very similar, but you can actually find the name of that thread by resting on that color. Take a look right below me on the status bar. You see that this one is called Nectar. If I rest on number seven, this one is called Dandelion. So they are indeed two separate colors. Let's now use the sequence view to help us isolate the colors of this Whirligig. We're going to play around with fill stitch. We're not going to change any of the blue. Rather, we're going to change each of the other colors. One of the options that we can do by using the sequence view is to hide the blue color. To do that, do you notice this eyeball right next to the plus sign? I'm going to click on that. Two things happen. First of all, it is selected. The eyeball itself has gone to a faded gray, but you also notice on the screen that the blue is no longer showing. We have not removed it from the design. It is not deleted. It is simply hidden. Whenever we want to bring it back, we would simply click back on that eyeball. We see the blue stitching. All right, let's do hide that. And when we hide the blue, we are left with our Whirligig. This will be a little easier for us to concentrate just on these colors. We're going to click on the lower gold area. With it selected, we take a look over here in sequence view and notice that the satin portion of that design is selected. If I have numerous areas of satins and runs and so forth, and I want to make sure that I have the correct area selected, very often I will click within the selection and drag down a bit and let go, just to make sure that I can verify that I do have the correct area to play with. I'll go ahead and do an undo to put it back into its original spot. We said we want to change the fill, which is the top property. The fill type is set to standard and the pattern is set to tatami. That actually takes its name from a Japanese woven mat with the same type of weave. We'll go ahead and click on the drop down arrow and choose the first option brick. We need to apply this. If your screen is like mine and you cannot see the apply button yet, Rest your mouse in such a way as to get your two-headed black arrow and click and drag down a bit until you see the apply. At this point, click on apply. You see the brick pattern in our gold area. We look at stitch length. Stitch length is actually the distance from one needle penetration to the next. You can see the stitch length in this illustration from one needle penetration to the next. Let's change that to a five and apply. And you see it tightens up the brick a little bit better. We want to be careful with going to a very short stitch length. If we were to change that to say a three and apply, we might think that this looks better, but beware because we are magnified at 200% if we were to rest on a corner handle and click and hold down in the gray status bar, you see that the size of this area that we are affecting is really about three quarter by a half inch, not very large at all. And that's a lot of tiny stitching in a pattern that's pulling in all directions in a little area. So let's go ahead and put that back to five for our stitch length apply. If we drop our zoom to a hundred percent, you see that that area is very small and at five millimeter we can still see the pattern of that brick. We'll bring that zoom back up to 200 so we can see and now let's play with the other colors and see what the other fill type patterns look like. We'll click on the pink and again I would drag that out just a hair to make sure I have the right one do an undo to put it back. I know that that satin stitch is the area I'd like to play with. We'll go ahead and click on Tatami, change this one to Corn, Apply. I don't think I'll change the stitch length on that one. The pattern looks very nice in that area. Click on our next color. I see down here that my satin is chosen. Drop down arrow for pattern. I'll put it to a pattern number one. 
apply it. I don't see a lot of indentation here. Let's go ahead and put that to a 5 and apply. And I like that just a little bit better with the indention. The next color, making sure that I have satin. Coming down to pattern number 2 and apply. And this one has a bigger groove in it. I like it. I don't need to change to 5 stitch length. We'll go ahead and choose the other green color. Yes, I have the satin in my sequence view chosen. Drop down for the pattern. And in this one, I'll go ahead and choose zigzag and apply. And that has a fun look to it. And then the final green one, we will leave at the tatami now. As I click down in there, do you see that I have not chosen the particular satin I wanted? It's actually on the outside, but if I wanted to change that, I'd need to make sure that I had the right area of that design selected. I'm going to come back into Sequence View, right click anywhere within, come up and say Collapse All, go back to our number one color, which is blue. Remember, it is faded. We'll click on that eyeball to bring the blue back. And now I see my completed design with the different fill patterns in each of the colors. Before we move on, I'd like to look again at properties fill, specifically density. With blue expanded, I'll click on the satin. And here we see that property set to a 0.30 millimeter. The word dense means having parts closely compacted. In embroidery, Density is the space between stitches. We see that represented right here. We'll look at this design from Urban Threads. The moon is somewhat see-through because the threads are spaced apart from each other, whereas the tree trunk is more solid with the threads closer to each other. Here's a close-up. The look of the moon is achieved from layering three arcs. We have one arc right here, the second fills this area here, and then the third is the outside arc, each of which is not very dense. There is open space between each of the strands of thread. Here, density is shown as a decreasing value, putting the thread strands closer together. The larger the number, the farther apart the threads. As you move down to smaller numbers, the threads get closer together. Density is one of those areas where we gain more knowledge the more we experiment on test stitches. You see from the tree, there are times you want a smaller number for density, and sometimes you want a larger number. Settings for density rarely stand alone either. We also must take into account the thread weight, the fabric, the stabilizer, and the design itself. When in doubt, leave the default and do a test stitch out. At this point, we have made changes to the original design. Take a look down at the Design Page tab for this design. That is the original file name. I need to be very careful at this point how I do my saving. Click up on File, and you'll notice that I have two options, Save and Save As. Should I choose save, it's going to keep the original name and override that original with my changes. I do not want to do that. We would absolutely want to do a file save as so that we're given the opportunity to type in a new name and not to save our changes over the original. I'm going to click after the number and I'll just type in KA my initials. Notice that the save as type is our C2S format, which is our native format for any of the Inspiration Series software. Click on Save, and notice that the file name has changed. The initials KA have been placed with that number so that I know it's mine. If I want to finish out this saving process, I cannot use a C2S to stitch out on my embroidery machine, so I'd have to do the second part of this. Go back up to File, down to Save As. I can leave that same name, but I do need to change the type. I'll use my drop-down arrow, and because I have baby lock machines, I'll come up here and choose the PES format, save it, and then I would be 
ready to take that design to my flash drive and stitch it out on my machine. To change over to our Hawaiian block, we simply click on the design tab for that page. Back in our block, we decide that we want to change the color of each of these flowers. If I go to select the flower, you can see that I don't pick up the entire flower, just parts of that. Instead of being digitized as one big area that could cause problems when stitched out with much pulling on the fabric, this design was done in sections to help with that. These are techniques you'll learn as you advance your digitizing knowledge. So, we need an alternative way to select the flower. We could come over here to Sequence View and click on the satins. This would be a tedious job since there are so many pieces and parts to this flower. We could also try to do a click and drag around the flower itself, but in doing that you see that we also pick up the green area. Undo, we'll put that back in position. The other option that we have is to once again use our hide feature. Let's come over to sequence view, right click within, collapse all. We see our two colors of fuchsia and our two colors of green. Let's click on the eyeball for each of those green. Remember that hides it, it does not delete the color. At this point, it's very easy for me to do a click and drag to select that flower. Once I do that, I want to come down to the thread bar, but I see only the four original colors. Let's travel down to the end of this bar, and this plus sign allows me to add colors. I know that I want four new colors for those four flowers, so I'll click on that plus sign four times. I don't care what colors are randomly given to me because I know I can change them. I like the yellow, so I'll leave that, but I'll click on this light green since we already have green for the stems, and I think I'll choose orange. Okay, that. I'll click on the brown. I'll not use that color, but rather a teal, and okay, that. And the final one, click on number eight, scroll down, and I'm going to pick a pretty purple, and okay, that. With those additional colors added, I can now right-click on the yellow for my first flower, select my next flower, right-click on the orange, select my third flower, right-click on the teal, and select the last flower, right-click on the purple. I now have each flower a different color, Notice too that the outline stitches is still that original fuchsia color, which is fine. I'll come back over here, right click in sequence view, collapse all, and now I want to find my green colors at the bottom, and I will turn those back on by clicking on the eyeballs. Here I have my design changed from the original Hawaiian block into a more colorful version. Once again, we would want to do a File, Save As. I could leave that same name and just type in Color. Save that, and I have not overridden my original design, but rather given this new design its own name. This video covered the File Open procedure to access the free designs. There is another way to bring designs to the screen using the library. You'll see that demonstrated in the next video. I'm Katherine Artinas and I'm glad you joined me today. I hope you're feeling a bit more comfortable playing in your Perfect Embroidery Pro.